Hi everyone, my name is Michael Swartz. I'm going to show you how to make a brush that can be used to paint hair and fur. And this brush is going to be um, 128 by 128 because we need to paint quickly. And if you go any larger than that, it really starts to slow down and there's a lag in Photoshop. So we're going to do 128 by 128, 72 DPI, grayscale, 8 bit. Click OK. All right, now let's let's select just a normal brush, and we're going to make a brush with a brush. Uh, this can be, let's go down to uh, 20 percent, 20 pixels, and the roundness will just soften it just a little bit. Go to about 90. Okay, let's zoom in on this small document, and I'm also going to set my brush opacity to 50 percent. So I'm going to hit the five key, and now I'm just going to draw three dots. And there's some, there's a, this is a common technique for making brushes to paint hair and fur. You can see there's a lot of other great tutorials that go over this kind of technique. I'm going to add like a, a couple smaller dots here and there just to kind of make it smoother. And that will, this, that will make it a little bit more suitable for fur because we're adding more dots. Okay, so yeah, if you were drawing strands of hair, Probably keep it to uh, two to three dots is just fine. Okay, now I'm going to uh, select all, and we're going to define this as a brush preset. Click OK. Now I'm going to make a new document, and this is just going to be to test the brush. So I'm going to make a 1024 by 1024, 72 DPI, RGB color, 8-bit is just fine. Okay, right out of the bat, this is what we have. And it's at 50% opacity. Let's hit zero to go to 100%. And you can see that there are some uh, dots that are appearing. And uh, that's part of the brush preset. So let's go into the brush preset settings here. Go to the brush tip shape and decrease the spacing. And that should eliminate all of those dots. And then the next thing I want to show you is the shape dynamics. Um, if you jitter the size, it can kind of break up the line slightly and make it a little less perfect. And then the other thing that's nice is the um, pen pressure can drive the size of the brush. And you can kind of truncate that and make sure it doesn't go smaller than a certain amount by using this minimum diameter. If I have it all the way at zero and I very gently touch and then push harder and then uh, slowly let up, it gets smaller and larger based on the pressure. I'm going to make my minimum diameter about 50%. OK, and angle jitter is also uh, good for adding variation, but for hair and fur, I'm not going to touch those. OK, and then the next one that's really helpful for hair and fur is color dynamics. You can jitter all kinds of things like the background color and foreground color. Right now it's black and white. so my brush is going to only be grabbing colors between the black and white range. And if I change the color to, let's say, red and blue, now it's going to jitter between those two colors. So it will be either red, blue, or anything in between, so shades of purple and so on. All right, so that's the uh, color dynamics. And that can be very handy, especially when you're, if you sample um, parts of the photograph or something that you're painting on top of. You can, you can very quickly get those foreground background colors and just kind of subtly jitter between them. And then hue, hue jitter is basically like a hue shifter, and it randomizes it. So if you crank it all the way to the right, it's going to randomize the color variation 100%, so you'll get totally random colors. Um, I, in my case, I just want to jitter the foreground background color, so I'm going to leave that turned off. Same deal with saturation. You know, you can jitter the saturation, so it could be less, less jitter or more jitter. I'm going to leave that off, um, or maybe you know, a little bit of variation isn't isn't bad. Let's leave, maybe put it at 10%. Brightness jitter is a good one. I'm going to leave that around 50. And purity. Uh, I'm not so concerned about that, so I'm going to leave that at, uh, at zero. All right, and then smoothing. 
um, can be helpful too. It can it can add it add a nice smooth edge to the brush that you're drawing. Okay, so let's try this out. I'm going to scale down my brush now and just do a couple strokes here and see how it's looking. Nice. Okay, so I think this is pretty suitable for drawing fur. Feels pretty natural, it's quick, it's responsive. Okay, let, let's do a test on an actual image and try some color variation. So here's an, uh, if you want to learn how I did this, this is also on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to just make a new layer here. And for the foreground, I'll choose this kind of bright orange. And for the background color, we'll use this darker orange brown. Okay, and I'm going to scale the brush down and just carefully You can see how it randomizes the color based on that foreground background jitter. And so this is great when you layer it too, and you can add a, a, you know, some sort of layer effect on it, like a drop shadow, for example. So as you're drawing these, they'll have a, a shadow underneath. Okay, so that's what that looks like. That's that's basically how to make a brush very quickly and start painting hair, feathers, and fur, and so on.